Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Let's Taste with the Intrepid Wino. My name is James Gersbrook and uh, welcome uh, if you're watching this on Facebook or maybe on YouTube uh, or indeed on my website intrepidwino.com. Thank you for joining me uh, and thank you to uh, the winery who has very generously donated samples for me to look at on this edition and on many editions before. Topper's Mountain, based in New England, which is in uh, northern New South Wales. Uh, it's a region that I haven't been to um, and it's a region that I haven't seen much wine from beyond what uh, I've seen from Topps Mountain but uh, certainly Topps Mountain have been um, doing some really exciting things which I think is uh, uh, giving me a lot of reason to be excited uh, particularly because they've been embracing some of the alternative varieties um, which if you've watched much of the My Let's Taste videos or if you've listened to my podcast or read stuff I've written, um, I'm all about alternative varieties, particularly Italian varieties. And, uh, and there is uh, quite a bit of Italian varietal um, material in uh, the two wines, the two red wines I'm looking at today, uh, both from the 2014 vintage. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm excited to sort of see what they have to offer. So I think we'll start off with the 2014 Bricolage Rouge. Uh, which is recommended retail of $30. Uh, it's a blend of Tempranillo, Nebbiolo, Tanat, Shiraz and Viognier, uh, which is, you could say, uh, it's quite an eclectic varietal blend considering that Tempranillo is a Spanish variety, Nebbiolo is an Italian variety, Tanat is uh, a southwestern France, French variety, uh, and Shiraz Viognier uh, probably is most famous in the northern Rhone Valley of France. Uh, so, so yeah, quite a quite quite an interesting blend. I certainly haven't seen a blend like that before. I would hazard a guess it's possibly one of the only blends of its type in the world. So let's uh, let's have a look. Goodness gracious! Kind of one of the hazards of the script caps. The uh, the part inside the top can kind of stick out a bit. Reasonably light in colour, not super concentrated. Nice colour, nice colour, really good appearance. It is kind of funny, it's called bricolage because it has kind of a bricky sort of colour. Quite aromatic, quite aromatic. I'm, I'm sort of seeing if I can pick out, I can sort of, I reckon I can smell a Tempranillo. And the Shiraz is, is also, even though it's probably a small part of the blend, it's, yeah, Shiraz I, th I think is um, certainly a much more pro um, aromatic variety. So it's quite pretty, uh, it's got sort of nice red fruits, a little bit of earthy, sort of meaty saltiness as well. It's very inviting. Let's taste it. It's reasonably light on the palate. Um, again, there's kind of red fruits, a little bit of um, charcuterie, kind of salty, fatty meat coming through. Um, it's got, <coughs> excuse me, a bit of bites on the mid palate, which I really like. Uh, good tannins, firm tannins, focused tannins, but not heavy and, and kind of aggressive tannins. Uh, it has a very soft finish as well. I think at thirty dollars, that uh, is certainly um, uh, worth buying because uh, not only is it a very drinkable, delicious wine for thirty dollars, uh, I think it's also an interesting wine at thirty dollars and something that you know is, is worth exploring more about. Uh, you know, not not only are there some alternative varieties in there, but uh, it's a very intriguing blend. So I, I do recommend trying a bottle of that one. Uh, the second one we'll look at, as mentioned. Is also from the 2014 vintage. It is uh, a wild ferment uh, Tempranillo. Now, um, I have looked at several Topaz Mountain wines before, uh, and there, there are a number that uh, labeled as wild ferment. Basically, uh, if you didn't know, wild ferment means that uh, you are basically not inoculating uh, juice with uh, either a cultured yeast or a 
um, commercial yeast, uh, you are allowing ambient yeasts that are, are either sort of coming from the vineyard or are um, existing in a winemaking facility to spontaneously uh, ferment the, the juice, uh, which uh, some people would prefer to avoid, particularly on much larger scales, because uh, it can be a little bit hard to control. Uh, you know, a lot of winemakers would rather have a more controlled fermentation, so they inoculate, which uh, generally goes a bit faster. Um, but in the case of, um, of these wines, uh, there's several of them are wild ferment. And some people would argue that uh, you get more uh, true, a truer character of the wine if you sp spontaneously ferment the wine rather than controlling it. So the wild ferment in 2014, really, really pretty in color, much lighter than the bricolage rouge, um, a beautiful sort of ruby color. Uh, it's certainly varietally um, correct, I guess. Uh, it does have the, the kind of tar and roses character that you typically associate with Nebbiolo as a variety. It's not uh, overly aromatic, it's not sort of really jumping out of the glass, it is slightly more complex, slightly more shy and reserved. It's uh, certainly pretty, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to trying this one. Let's taste. Quite light on the palate, really good freshness, really good acidity, very persistent, very complex. The recommended retail price for this is $38 and um, this is an absolute cracker. I think this is a fantastic, really, really good example of Nebbiolo for Australia. I think um, it is in a slightly lighter mold and not going for really rich, robust, bold characters. Um, it, it, uh, it is more in line with a, a northern Piedmont Italian style of Nebbiolo. Uh, lighter, slightly more savory, but sort of more red fruits. Um, it kind of reminds me of a really classic Langa Nebbiolo as well. Uh, I think that is uh, it's absolutely worth purchasing uh, if you want to kind of see the potential of Nebbiolo in Australia. Uh, $38, wow, absolute bargain I reckon. So thank you very much Toppers Mountain, uh, Bricolage Rouge, a, a really good interesting purchase of $30. The Nebbiolo at $38 is, uh, is a, a really good buy. Um, but uh, it's, it's been great to have an opportunity to look at some of the new releases from Topper's Mountain. This is uh, the third of uh, three uh, in a series looking at their wine. So um, I always appreciate the opportunity to look at uh, people's wines that they submit. Uh, so please do get in contact with me if you'd like to see your wines profile here on Let's Taste with the Intrepid Wino. Um, you can do so via my website, intrepidwino.com, or you can email me. Uh, you, if it, on my website, you can uh, look at different writings and, and experiences I've had in the past. Uh, there's lots and lots of other videos just like this on the Intrepid Wino YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe, uh, like some of the videos, share them on social media, leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Um, in fact, one of, the, one of the old Let's Taste videos is, uh, is going uh, you know, kind of micro-viral in, uh, in Turkey at the moment, which is pretty, uh, pretty interesting. Um, and, and of course you can find me on social media at Trevor Wino on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter but until next time, cheers!